Shark Coochie Board. I hate you. I love you though, I really do. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Elisa's Eats and today I'm going to show you how to make a charcuterie board or a grazing platter. They are so delicious and so simple. They always look beautiful at a table um, for a party or wedding or anything else. I've made some huge ones before and they're so much fun. They look like they take a lot of effort but they really don't. You just throw stuff around on a plate, things that people like and then you go to town. Terrific. So these are the ingredients you're going to need. You basically use whatever the hell you like and just put it on a board and eat it. But this is what I like to use, so feel free to join me. Let's do it. So I typically like having an odd number of each type of food group. So I've got three kinds of vegetables that I've chopped up. Bite-sized pieces of cucumber. I use the Lebanese cucumber. Some carrots and celery, just because I like them because they've got a bit of a crunch and the, the cucumber has a bit of a softer texture. Five kind of fruits. I've got two colors of grapes because they look gorgeous in complementary with each other. Some apples, green kiwi fruit, and some strawberries. Then I've got three kinds of meats here. I've got a nice suppressor salami. Now we've made this into a lovely little rose, which will be in this video up the top here. I've got some lovely triple smoked leg ham, some prosciutto, and they're all very mild because I like mild things and Flavia likes spicy things, but she doesn't like pork, so that's fine. She's a cheese gal, that's great. Um, get it? Great. So we've got three kinds of cheeses as well. I've got a nice vintage cheddar that I'm going to chop up into little cubes, um, a nice brie, and then we've got this Mercy Valley cheese. It's a thing in Perth. Everyone has it on their grazing boards and everyone always goes, have you tried the Mercy Valley? It's everything. Then I've got two kinds of dips. I like using one that's got a nice roasted flavor. This one's roasted capsicum and cashew. It's really nice. And then Flavia loves a bit of a creamier French onion. So that's what we've gone for. You can also use pesto, anything else. We've got some nice olives here. I have definitely already had a couple. You want something that's briny, so either olives or some little pickles or little cornichon, tiny pickles, gorgeous on there as well. I've got some dark chocolate and almonds just to fill spaces and also because I love chocolate, let's be honest. And then I've got three kinds of bread, cracker, vessel things for your food. I've got a nice Turkish loaf here. I've got some water crackers and some lovely little seedy crackers with cranberries and pumpkin seeds throughout it because they're fancy. If you can already look at this, this looks lovely if you were just to put this out on its own, but no, we're gonna put it on a lovely little board. It's gonna be gorgeous. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's get started. So this is my chopping board that I'm using. I like using a single color chopping board just because it makes everything on there pop. So I'm planning this for about four people as our main meal and then having a few pieces of pizza afterwards as well. So this will be quite substantial. I usually overflow it all the time anyway, so we'll see how we go, just because I love food. What I'm gonna do first is place my little ceramic bowls. So again, I like doing odd numbers, so about three. And I like putting them in regular placements around the board. I don't like them being in lines. Why? Uh, just do. And so then I like to fill those up. So we're just putting the dip into the bowls and then a Mediterranean mix of olives on the little one. I'm the only one that likes olives, so these are all mine. That's why there's not that many. Again, personalise it to what you like. I like chopping my vintage cheddar into cubes or little rectangles because I like having all my cheeses different shapes. Then I'm going to take my softer, the Mercy Valley cheese, cut it in half into little triangles, and then I'm going to keep my brie whole. So we've got some squares, triangles and circles. Geometry. So I like putting my cheeses again irregularly on the board, but kind of equally spaced like I did with the little bowls. So for the meats, as you can see, I've got the salami in a little rose here, but with some extra bits, I'm just gonna fold them up into little triangles. The prosciutto I'm gonna roll up into little rolls and the ham just kind of sprinkle around. Now, I like putting the salami, especially if it's in a rose, against some supporting structures, like two of the cheeses and some of the bowl. Now, I'm putting the ham around the brie, kind of to frame it, and then placing the prosciutto slightly offline to it. Then, for the vegetables, I'm going to take my cucumber first and place little groups of three around the board, again, in odd little numbers, just because then you see them all around the platter. It's a bit cute. Then I'm gonna grab the carrots next, and then the celery. You want to mix up the colours so that everywhere on the plate there's something different. 
fill in any of the nooks and crannies with some of the vegetables too. So I'm gonna put my red grapes primarily down the middle here, just because they break up the color around it. There's quite a lot of green there. Then I'm gonna grab some little green boys and just place them over the board. <laughs> ah! So many runaway grapes, stop! Now make sure to cut your apples last minute or if you are serving it, you can always mix them around in some lemon juice. This stops the oxidization process and keeps them less brown. Mine have just started to brown now. That's one of the things you want to do last. Now I'm just gonna fan the apples out and place them around the board as well. Then I'm just gonna place a few pieces of kiwi fruit here. I like using green because it's nice and vibrant in color. And then for the crackers, I just try to find any room where there is. Sometimes I don't have any room left and I put them on a separate board for their own. I usually do that with the bread. Um, as you can see, I'm struggling to find some room for these crackers here. That's okay, don't stress. But I typically try to put them around the cheeses or the dips, just so it's like, ooh, a little friend. So now at this point, you can see it's quite full. So now I'm gonna just fill the spaces with everything else, like my strawberries, my nuts, and my chocolate. And then wherever I can see some extra room for some veggies or something, I'm gonna chuck it down. I mean, it's like when you're at a party, you don't want all foods on one side of the board and everyone on the other side of the board being separate. You want everyone to mingle a little bit. Unless you've got allergies, then don't do that. Now, just to finish it off, I like whenever I have little dips to put some tiny little spoons in there. And then I like to put some little knives with my cheeses that I haven't chopped up into little bits. So I'm gonna put him with my brie. I'm gonna put him with my little Mercy Valley just there. And one thing you wanna definitely do with your brie is cut into it. No one wants to be the first person to cut into the brie. So just do it for them and people already start eating it. And also obligatory, you must also try the food before you serve it and also graze while you're making it. That's why you always have extra stuff while you're cooking because. And I'm just gonna put the bread and crackers on a separate little board because I have no room for it, like it always happens. But of course, if you wanna incorporate on the board, just put less on there. Now, the order of these things really doesn't matter as long as you have fun putting it on the board. Okay guys, so that's how you make my charcuterie board. Now, of course, this will change with seasonal fruits or different veggies that we're feeling, or if people have allergies or like, they like different things, it could just be old cheese in Flavia's case, because she'd love that. Um, but yeah, it's a great thing to bring to a party or to have people over with because everyone gets to pick and choose what they want. It's amazing. And yeah, I was gonna say let's eat, but we're saving this for later. So um, the great thing about why you want to be the cook a lot of the times is you get all the leftovers. And like, I mean, there's still so much leftover. And so we just, we just get to eat it. This is why I cook. This is the only reason. It's terrific because you can just pick and choose anything. It's so good. Cheese. Yeah, the cheese is basically all flavies. I like the meat, so that works really easily. But yeah, it's gorgeous. I love it. I hope you make it too. Like, I always make these for things. It's terrific. Give it a go. Let's go. If you want to make this ahead of time, you just cover it in glad wrap and put it in the fridge until you're ready. So easy. That was very threatening. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And please leave us a comment down here. We'd really love to hear back from you. Let us know if you want us to make anything. Ideally fandom. Pew, pew, pew. Finger guns. Lame. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs>